carburetor replacement on Briggs and Stratton eight horsepower industrial commercial engine and this is on the yard machines 31 ton log splitter hi everybody I got home from the boat on Wednesday it is now Friday I feel like I've accomplished next to nothing first thing I had to do when I got home was replace our dishwasher uh, still working on that had to wait on some parts to come in so they'll be in tomorrow and then I'll get back to that I've had multiple requests to deliver firewood of course it's that time of year yeah unfortunately I got really far behind this year for a number of reasons back in the early spring I couldn't get logs because of the weather it was just too wet for the guys to get the logs out of the woods so that set me back and then we had a bunch of uh, other obligations we had to deal with this year so I'm way behind on pro processing firewood I'm gonna be trying to catch up but in the meantime I do have some that I can sell I think I was gonna split some of the larger pieces so I could check the moisture content inside of these the bigger pieces some of them were five or six inches in diameter because I got such a late start this wood has only sat to season for eight months maybe so not nearly long enough I don't think a lot of its oak so couldn't get the log splitter started I took the carburetor off to clean it and it was full of goop uh, so in spite of me using uh, fuel storage treatment which I use uh, uh, it's a product called stable which is essentially kerosene that's really all it is to make a long story short I know it's already too late in spite of me using that stuff it's getting a spark it's getting fuel it's not running so I pulled the carburetor off of it and it was all full of goop and jelly it out as best as I could but then when I went to uh, remove the main jet which is where the clogs normally happen I couldn't get the jet out of it it was seized in there so tight that every time I tried to turn it with the screwdriver the little brass ears on the jet just broke off so I couldn't get the jet out now I have to replace the entire carburetor so we'll start by removing the air filter There are two 5 sixteenths screws, and this just pops right off. That's the air filter. Always check it, make sure you don't have mice living in there. Bottom left, it, there's a bracket back here. We want to take that off. Uh, you can see I've already, already had this apart, so this is coming apart pretty easy. Take that off. These two nuts right here essentially hold the carburetor in place. And this, the air filter uh, housing. So you take these two nuts off. Right here in the back is a rubber hose. And that is the exhaust or the, the blow-by gas hose. So that what that does is it creates uh, a little bit of negative pressure in the crankcase of the engine. So it sucks any blow-by gases back into the carburetor to reburn them. All right, I've already popped that off, and I'll show you that here in a second. This hose is what I was talking about. It's kind of a pain to put this on and off and since I knew I was taking it apart again I just kind of left it off next thing is we're gonna make sure the fuel is shut off so the fuel is shut off I'm gonna release the hose clamp for the fuel line and then we're gonna pull that off there we go all right so put that out of the way Right here is the fuel pump. 
I think it was originally mounted up here. I don't know what happened. I think maybe... Yeah, I don't really know what happened to that. Maybe it needs to get... Oh, good. It broke. <laughs> it just broke off. Well, there's that's good news. What? It has gone within a five-second time span. It went from, yes, I'm going to be able to finish getting this log splitter running to, nope, can't get it running, have to order a fuel pump. <laughs> and that is how I think my whole life goes. <laughs> Gotta laugh, gotta laugh. All right, we'll put this uh, lovely piece of fuel line aside. So I was just about to say, if you have to take this fuel pump off, make sure you know where the lines go, because it matters. One is a vacuum line, which operates the pump itself. The other, the other ones, one is a fuel line, taking fuel from the tank, and the other one is the pressure side and that pushes fuel into the carburetor so you have to you have to remember get this in the right in the right order i think i think it was this way no the holes don't even line up so i don't know i don't know what happened but anyway it's just been hanging there for a long time but now we have to get a new fuel pump all right i am going to continue to remove the carburetor for the purposes of this video and then and I'll have to go order a fuel pump. Okay, we're gonna pull the gasket off. The new carb comes with a gasket, but we'll save that one just in case. Now, these things are a little funky. These are spline drives. Um, I didn't have the right tool for this, but I do have a 6.5 32nd socket, and you can get away with that. Uh, you're better off if you have the right tools for the job, but this this works So we're just going to loosen them and then these just come out All right. Put those aside the next thing is the throttle linkage you want to be careful with this because you got a little tiny spring so, rotate this up. Hang on a second. There we go. All right, so rotate this up, and then the actual throttle link comes off, and then carefully lift the spring off, and then set that back there, and you're done. Now, the old I will pull this apart and show you what I mean about the jet being seized in there. Now I need to get this shield off of here and it's kind of like a combination shield and a gasket i believe this is actually two separate well the new one i think is two separate gaskets so we're going to pop this off just get a i'm just using a a razor scraper to loosen it up There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think I think this gets a gets two gaskets. All right, so that's trash. Now I'm gonna just since I'm here, I'm just gonna scrape some of this old gasket off of here. And I'll probably get my get the whizzer out and whiz all the whiz all the stuff off of this, make it nice and smooth again. Not a huge, not a huge deal, but we like things to be clean. Good enough, like I said, I'll, I'll hit that with the whiz, whizzer wheel and knock, knock all that stuff off. One more thing to show you before I go in. Right here is the tag for the, the engine. It has the model number, a type number, and a code, which I believe that's the actual serial number. You will need that information when you go to find the parts for these. I use my cell phone camera to take a close-up picture and then I can actually read the numbers. Works out better that way. 
I want to show how I locate these parts for the log splitter. Since it's a Briggs & Stratton engine, we're going to go right to the Briggs & Stratton website. BriggsAndStratton.com, North America, in my case, English. All right, so now we are using the parts lookup tool. We're going to go to engine parts, and now we're going to do the model. So my model number is 196432- and then the type is 1202. And I'm not going to put anything after that. We'll see if that comes up with anything. So I believe this is what I'm looking for here is between these serial numbers. So we're going to pick that. I'm going to go all the way down here. Oops. One. I blew past it. One nine six is in here somewhere. One nine six four three two. So we are right there. Got to be getting close here. Well, here we go. One two zero two E one. That's the one I want right there. Beautiful. Sorry that took so long. Controls, springs, fuel tank, hoses. Let's try that one. Here we go. I think that's it right there. 387, 385 is a screw. Fuel pump. So this says the part number 799056. So let's make a note of that. There we are, 799056. Yep, so I could buy the fuel pump for $26.88 directly from Briggs & Stratton if I wanted to. Instead, we're going to bring up eBay, because eBay has a lot of these parts for like a quarter of the price. So we're going to go 799056 and see what we come up with. Well, lucky there. Fuel pump and fuel lines. Fuel pump, 799056 for $7.79. I think I'm going to just get the pump because I really don't. The rest of the stuff, I don't like buying fuel lines sight unseen. So I think I'm going to just buy the pump. So we're going to do a buy it now and get it on the way.